Hi, my name is Elizabeth Murphy, and today I'm going to be analyzing and reflecting on my side and contributions made during the negotiation titled Outside Offer. So I was in the position of the employee who is striving to obtain more benefits within my current position, um, which I had held for a little over a year, in an attempt to keep my current role and decline an outside offer that was proposed from an alternate company and essentially offered everything that I was looking for. Um, this negotiation is center at, centered around me and my current boss, um, and I'm going to be reflecting on what I believe I excelled in and what I need to improve on in future negotiations. So just as a little preface, I believe that this specific negotiation proved uh, to be very beneficial as it simulated a real-life situation that is very prevalent within today's society. Uh, I also really appreciated how the simulation was made more personable and relatable by adding the aspect of having a relationship and making a large life decision based on love and this relationship. Um, I feel as though that this made the experience extremely intriguing. So there were a few instances and strategies I utilized within this negotiation that proved to be beneficial and that did aid me in retrieving the outcome I desired and what was best for me overall for the future. Um, so the first aspect that I excelled in was my ability to establish a positive mood within the negotiation. Good evening. Thank you for coming and meeting with me today. Yeah, of course. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. I just really appreciate you meeting with me about this. I know I sent you an email a few days ago. Mm -hmm. Beginning a negotiation with a positive statement, which was seen in the clip before through me thanking my counterpart for taking time out of their busy schedule to come meet with me, creates a very welcoming and low tension environment, which will ultimately set the stage for a very productive negotiation. Um, this simple statement of gratitude also establishes the fact that I have a sense of respect for my counterpart, which is very important considering she's an individual who I should treat with respect since she is my boss. Through the establishment of a positive mood, there can also be areas of trust that are built or strengthened, in our case strengthened since we already had a relationship, uh, which in turn can lead the negotiating parties, me and my boss, to be more understanding and more likely to compromise to meet the desired outcome. So another aspect I believe I excelled in was my ability to confidently reject the offer my current boss made to me and accept the outside offer I was provided. Although it can be very difficult to leave a position, especially when speaking directly to your boss in an attempt to make everything work out, I believe I was strong in my decision to take the outside offer as it would benefit my character the most in the long run. My boss was simply unable to provide me with enough benefits that would make my experience at staying, with staying with the company worthwhile. As my character was mainly concerned with the aspects of location and vacation time, my boss was unable to provide me with the correct location and the correct vacation. I emailed you, this is my biggest concern, location is my biggest priority right now and concern that are in Europe. Yeah. And I understand that the San Francisco office is understaffed and I do really enjoy working here, but that's just not an option for me. I can't be in the United States, I have to be. Uh, somewhere in Europe. Although I do really, really love this company and it aligns with all my morals, I don't think that I'll be able to stay with you guys just because I am looking for a place in Europe and my alternative, off alternative offer did offer me a position in a European office. But I just want to let you know that it's been great working with you. Yeah, we're going to be sad to see. In that previous video, it's also seen that I'm stating how grateful I was to work with the company uh, for the time that I was able to in an attempt to maintain the relationship and positive attitude that was established, just in case I need a reference from my counterpart in a future scenario, or if I would like to stay cordial with them in a future scenario. A final aspect I believe I excelled in within the specific negotiation was my ability to jump around to different topics when my counterpart and I could not seem to come up with a concise solution. It is extremely vital to not keep a negotiation linear, uh, which means that you take things one step at a time, because it limits the amount of flexibility that the individuals will have, which can limit the amount of mutual beneficial solutions that can be reached. Um, moving at a non-linear pace also allows for the momentum of the negotiation to continue, which proved to be beneficial as my counterpart and I came to a consensus within a reasonable time frame. Yeah, we can circle back, we can circle back. We can circle back to that. So now to move on to the things I wish I had done better within this exercise. So although I believe I did many things right within this negotiation, there are also several things that I could have done differently in order to make the negotiation uh, move more smoothly and to enhance it in a way. Um, so the first aspect I noticed that I could have avoided was my excessive use of buffer words between my sentences, like um and uh. Um, um, but there are um, well, um, 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 position, but um. Um, I just, um, um, yes, um, 
So this negotiation was supposed to simulate a professional setting, which my use of buffer words did not represent. Saying um and uh between sentences makes me sound uneducated and unprofessional, as well as unprepared for this role. Um, I do not sound concise in my statements, and it's definitely something I will take note of next time I negotiate. I also find this very interesting because it's something that I was unaware of. I did not realize that I use buffer words so frequently in my sentences. So something else that could have been avoided in order to make this negotiation more coherent and realistic was my laughter. There are several points within this negotiation itself where I'm found laughing under my breath or just simply laughing, which is completely inappropriate and would not be accepted within a real-life negotiation. This simulation is intended to display what a real-life negotiation would look like, and my laughing represents a casual and unserious situation, which is the exact opposite of what we're striving for. My counterpart and I also spent a prolonged period speaking about my relationship, which although is a main point of the negotiation, it was not necessary to speak about it for the two minutes that we did, and it was not the main premise of our meeting. <laughs> okay, it's just so great, I love it so much. Um, so much. <laughs> so after analyzing our negotiation, another aspect I could have altered was my level of assertiveness. I said countless times how I was completely understanding of company policy when I should have simply stated the benefits I wanted to enhance. By not being assertive enough, I gave my counterpart higher control and did not seem extremely passionate about staying with the company. I understand that the San Francisco office is understaffed and I do agree. I understand that the policy with this company is that there's very strict on vacation time. I understand mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't take more than four weeks paid yeah. vacation time. Um, and I appreciate, I, I understand that. I know that this company values its workers and it relies on the, on the work that they produce. It is a positive aspect in some cases to be assertive as long as it is done in a way that does not create tension between the two parties. In my role, I should have displayed a higher level of assertiveness in order to attain my goal of staying with this company. So the final outcome for our negotiation was that we were unable to create a plan that would mutually benefit us both. So we ended our negotiation with no deal and I took my BATNA, which was the outside offer I was provided by an alternate company. The main reason for this outcome was that my counterpart was unable to provide me with the adequate location and vacation time I was seeking. Provided next is a pie graph representing my personal scoring system and how I was preparing to gauge this situation. As you can see by the pie graph, uh, location and vacation time are the two main concerns of my character's interest. My role specifically stated if I was unable to receive the correct amount of vacation time and location that I desired, then I should take my BATNA, which is ultimately what, did I, what I ended up doing. This personal scoring system proved to be extremely beneficial because it made my thought process more sufficient and organized and aided me in um, finding a conclusion that was concise and the best option for my character as an individual and for the future. This negotiation proved to be extremely beneficial and it provided me with insights on what to expect from a real life scenario. I will use this example to work further on my strengths and to fix my weaknesses in order to be a strong negotiator in the future.